this is Michael Buffer, and let's get ready for Knockout TV. Welcome to Knockout TV. I am Tim Pileski, and we are in a very special place. Fighter's Heaven. This is where Muhammad Ali trained for the thrill in Manila, the rumble in the jungle, and we're going to take a tour of the whole area of his training camp, of Ali. Very special place. We are so, so thankful to be here, and we're going to have a great show. You're going to really enjoy it, and so are we. Last night, I had a dream. When I got to Africa, I had one hell of a rumble. I had to beat Tarzan's behind first for claiming to be the king in the jungle. For this fight, I've wrestled with alligators. I've tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning and put thunder in jail. You know I'm bad. I have murdered a rock. I injured a stone and I hospitalized a brick. I'm so bad I make medicine sick. I'm so fast, man, I can run through a hurricane and don't get wet. When George Fulman meets me, he'll pay his debt. I can drown a drink of water and kill a dead tree. Wait till you see Muhammad Ali. Now, we are fortunate to get a tour from our old buddy here, Mick Stefanik, is going to take us on a tour, just like he would do with anybody visiting. Behind me are two signs that sort of drive what we're doing here at the camp. First of all, it's our mission statement uh, that we're trying through the, through the restoration of the camp to remind some and educate others about the remarkable and inspirational life of Muhammad Ali. And when Muhammad Ali trained here, it was free and open to the public and we're doing the same thing. We are free and open to the public, uh, but we do accept donations, and our donations are going to the Muhammad Ali Center down in Louisville, Kentucky, the Michael J. Fox Parkinson's Foundation, and then locally here in Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania, uh, Avenues, which is an organization that works with people with disabilities. This side of the road was built in 1972. Uh, the other side of the road went up a couple years later, and I'll start with the other side of the road. There's 10 buildings. Ollie had a mosque built for herself for prayer and worship and meditation. There are eight cabins on that side of the road, three down below and five up on the hill. And then there's also a bigger cabin that was used as a rec room and an office area. The first building you're going to see here is this chalet. And the chalet was used for his family to stay while he was here training. Ollie had his own cabin built, which we'll see on the other side of the gym. The boulders that you see, the boulders were all brought in and they were painted by his father, Cassius Clay Sr., who was a sign painter down in Louisville, Kentucky. They're all people that he wanted to honor with their own individual boulder. They're mostly fighters. There's two that are not fighters. One is Angelo Dundee, who was his well-known trainer. And the other non-boxer would be this one here, which says Ali to Bernie 1973, who was Bernie Pollock. In 1967, Muhammad Ali fought Ernie Terrell and Ernie Terrell trained down on the mink farm of the Pollocks leading up to that fight against Muhammad Ali. Gene Kilroy was from Monterey City, Pennsylvania, which is about 25 minutes here or so. And uh, Gene introduced Ali to Bernie. But before Ali came here, he trained down on the Pollock mink farm down in Deer Lake, which is about three miles from here. And uh, on that mink farm, Bernie Pollock had an outdoor ring built and he invited boxers to come and train. So Ollie begins training down there for a period of time, but bad weather interrupts his training. Rain and wind hits and he can't work out for a number of days. And he asks Bernie if there's somewhere else that he could build something permanent. And the Pollocks own this land, so Muhammad Ali bought this land from the Pollock family. And then as they say, the rest is history. Muhammad Ali built this camp in 1972 and he owned it up through 1997. He, his last training for fights was in 1980 against Larry Holmes and then he had a fight against Trevor Burbick in 1981. Uh, he still held on to the camp until 1997. It was sold to a martial arts instructor, George Dillman from Reading, Pennsylvania, and it was called the Butterfly Bee Bed and Breakfast. And then George Dillman owned it up through 2016 and that's when it was purchased by the current owner, Mike Madden. Mike Madden grew up a huge fan of Muhammad Ali, and that's his drive behind restoring and saving the camp. And Mike Madden is responsible and is behind all of the restorations and the reopening of the camp. This is truly a labor of love for Mike. Uh, he does not charge any admission price. We are working off of donations. Uh, Mike, an interesting side note, Mike is a huge Ali fan, and his father, John Madden, was a huge Sugar Ray Robinson fan. And um, it's, they have some great conversations, but... Um, 
Mike decides to buy the camp shortly after Ollie's passing in June of 2016. So he comes out here and, and walks the grounds and uh, decides he wants to buy it. And then he purchases it, purchases it later in 2016. And um, there's a story about him calling his father uh, to let him know that he was buying this. And he's standing over by the Joe Lewis Rock while he's calling his father. And he says, hey, Dad, what are you up to? And it just so happened that his dad was in his office talking with Troy Aikman. And his, he goes to his father, well, we're going to be saving a piece of Americana, Dad. And his dad goes, well, what do you mean, Mike? And he goes, I'm buying the Ali camp back here in Pennsylvania. And then and, and, and John's sort of response was, well, God, somebody's got to do it. Up the hill, you'll see the bunk houses, and that's where the sparring partners stayed while they were here getting ready or, or as they were preparing Muhammad Ali for his next fight. Behind me is the kitchen, and when we get into the kitchen, there's two items that are original in the kitchen, the kitchen table and the original gas stove that his Aunt Coretta used to do the cooking for his staff. And, and any guest, Muhammad Ali would welcome any kind of visitors in to have dinner, breakfast, lunch with them. One of the features here in the kitchen is the sign on the wall, Rules of My Kitchen. And the rules weren't Muhammad Ali's rules, but they were his Aunt Coretta's rules. And they were spelled out on that sign on the wall, which was painted by Muhammad Ali's father also. When people are here at the camp, they like to come into the kitchen and sit down at the actual table that was here when Muhammad Ali was training and go through some of the books that we have here on the table. This book in particular was done in 1974 while he was here training for George Foreman. It's a Peter Angelo Simon book and it just has some great pictures of the camp. Ali was often out and about in the communities and did a lot of public appearances and one of the great stories is contained in this book where he's at a nursing home and while he's in the nursing home a, no a nurse shouted to one old man, do you know who this is? Peering carefully at Muhammad Ali's face he shouted, yes, Joe Lewis. Muhammad Ali nodded in acknowledgement. Later he joked, he's pretty far along, let him think I'm Joe Lewis. He's just the kind of guy that Muhammad Ali was. Over here to my left is the original fireplace. It's as original as can be. It has been patched up a little bit. And then over a little bit in the distance is the Ali cabin. And the Ali cabin has a different look than the other buildings because it's made out of an old railroad bridge that was torn down. And as part of the visits uh, and the tours, we have people watch a video, a four minute video of Dick Cavan interviewing Muhammad Ali in that cabin and we have the cabin recreated to what you would see in the video. That's your bell, I take it. That bell rings every morning at 4.30 and every fighter in those two bunk houses must be down here dressed by five red run. It rings yep. again at 8 o'clock for breakfast and 5 o'clock for dinner. 10 o'clock, everybody's in bed. Okay, we're here standing outside of the Muhammad Ali cabin where he would stay and was built for him personally. Uh, when we get inside, we're going to see it recreated just like it looked in January of 1974 when he was here training for the second Joe Frazier fight. As we're going into the cabin here, you're going to see items that, were ta that are talked about in the video of the interview with Dick Cavett. They're going to talk about a rope bed. They're then going to come over here and stand by a table. Looks similar to this with a stuffed pheasant on. And there were oil lamps in here. Again, in 1974 when he trained here, there was no running water in this building and no electricity. But by the time he was here training later on, it was modernized. Then they're going to come over here for about the last two minutes of the video and talk about the coal stove. And then they're going to finish up coming over here and pumping out a glass of water. And this cabin, again, gives you the feel of what you would see in the video. And then we also have a collection of photos hanging on the wall of Ali here in the cabin. These two here of him on the bed and then finally one of him in a rocking chair by the coal stove. And then in all the buildings we do have photos that help to give people a feel of what it was like here when he was training. We're standing outside the mosque here that Ali had built for himself for prayer, worship and meditation. And then inside the mosque we show a video that he is asked by a youngster over in England what does he want to do when he retires from boxing. He gives a great answer where he sums it up by saying he wants to live his life to get ready to meet God. And he talks about doing good and how we should be good people. 
And how much of our life we don't do anything? And he, he references how much we sleep. And when we sleep, what do we do? We don't do anything. And then we have eight cabins on the ground set up similarly to the one I'm standing in now. And we are looking to make it available for business, corporate, executive retreats where they could come and have some kind of a uh, business function. And uh, they are available. There's eight of them, three of them. They have two beds in each. So across the road, you're looking at the stable that was here. It was originally the Pollock stable where they would keep their horses. You can see that there has been nothing done to the exterior of the, the stable except for a new roof on. And we use it as a frame of reference when people are touring where you can see the bark is still on the barn. But if you looked at the other buildings or as you were seeing the other buildings, the gym and the kitchen, for example, they are 80% or better original structurally. It's just that the bark has been taken out and the cement has been removed and uh, they've just been brought back to life, refurbished and renovated. And then up above the scale is written what he weighed on August 8th, 1978, while he was here training for the second Sphinx fight. Okay, as we're walking out of the rub down room, we'll be entering the actual gym area. And straight ahead, you'll see a ring that replicates where the ring was when Ollie trained here. Uh, and then while Ollie was training up in the ring, people would just sit in folding metal chairs around the ring. And it was free and open to the public, just like it is now and uh, Ali would just welcome people with open arms. People just came in and entered through the far door and would sit down and watch him train during his workout sessions. Hanging on the walls is a collection of photos. Overall, we have over 100 photos on display here at the camp throughout the buildings, and it's just a collection of photos, uh, some depicting life here at the camp. Along with the photos hanging on the walls are also some great quotes of Muhammad Ali. He just had some really great interesting quotes and they are part of our display here in the gym. Great Larry Holmes quote. Our main picture over here of Muhammad Ali, or our main photo of Muhammad Ali is a photo from Jeff Julian, who is our camp photographer and who started out as an amateur photographer here in the late 70s. Here is a collection of photos that people really get tuned into while they're here walking around in the gym. This photo here is in the early stages of the camp. This is the gym. This is the foundation of the kitchen. The kitchen hasn't been built yet. And this trailer was brought up from the Pollock Mink Farm for early living quarters. While Ollie was training down at the Mink Farm, he would stay in this trailer and then it was brought up to the grounds here as they were building the camp. Here he is, pictured in the gym not too far from where I'm standing, talking to his wife, Belinda, and he's here actually sweeping the floor. This picture here gives some early stages of the camp. The boulders are being put into place, and then there are no cabins built yet for his staff and overnight guests on the other side of the road yet. This is from 1974. Picture here with the Beatles is an eye-opener, but this is while he was still training down in Miami, Florida. Part of his workout and staying in shape was chopping trees. He did road work, which was running the roads nearby and also chopping down trees. He chopped down hundreds and hundreds of trees as part of his training and workout. And then this is a great picture of the fireplace, of him standing in front of the fireplace. And the fireplace would be about right here. So this shows you a little bit of the transformation. As the, when the trailer was removed, the fireplace went up and the fireplace would be right about here nowadays. When the camp was being built in 1972, Muhammad Ali called Cherry Hill, New Jersey home. And this is a great quote people tune into, it just shows you how much he loved this place. Here he is in front of the kitchen with his wife Veronica. 
And then here he is sitting in the gym with Bernie Pollock, the gentleman that he bought the land from and whose mink farm he trained on before he, he came here. And then this is a great photo of him out on a jog with Archie Moore, the great Archie Moore, who was a mentor to him early on in his career and who he got the idea from about the boulders. In this photo here, he's sitting on the logs which were right outside his rub down room where he would often sit after he had his morning run and you could see him here after a workout sitting on the logs. This uh, building here is the chalet where Ali's family would stay. Ali of course had his own cabin, uh, but they would stay here. We trying to recreate it, kind of like a welcoming center in a way. Uh, we got some photographs here of Ali in his later life. These are all photographs I took. I was fortunate enough to take later in his life. I did photograph Ali here in the late 70s and reconnected later. Over here we have uh, some of the some of the various documentaries that were filmed here. Ken Burns, HBO, uh, some of the visits. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of activity has been going on here at the camp since Mike Madden bought it. Uh, there's some of the Ring Magazine covers. And over in this wall, these two walls are two handwritten poems uh, that were found here at the camp, written by Ali. Uh, they've been enlarged. And talk about his life. What would you like people to think about you when you've gone? I'd like for them to say he took a few cups of love. He took one tablespoon of patience. One tablespoon, teaspoon of generosity, one pint of kindness. He took one quart of laughter, one pinch of concern, and then he mixed willingness with happiness. He added lots of faith, and he stirred it up well. Then he spread it over a span of a lifetime, and he served it to each and every deserving person he met. 